بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي هدانا لقاطة وما كنا لنهدي لولا أن هدانا الله السلام عليكم dear brothers and sisters We are getting close to the month of Ramadan The month of Ramadan is approaching We have about 8 to 9 days at most And the talk that, uh, that we, uh, inshallah, we will have in the in this session and the next week is about a lecture, a sermon that uh, Sheikh Sadduq and some other scholars they narrate it from Imam Rizali his salam, and he narrates it from Amir al Mu'az from his fathers from Ali Ali his salam. And Ali Ali Salam says that it is the sermon that the Prophet, peace be upon him, delivered in the last Friday of the month of Sha'ban. And so some advices, some instructions to get prepared when the month of Ramadan is approaching to get prepared to benefit the most from the divine invitation the month of Ramadan. So this week and the next week would be dedicated to discussing this lecture going over some instruction that Prophet peace be upon him uh, gave to his followers including us in this lecture. Let me start the discussion by Providing a short introduction. It's, I see it beneficial in order to benefit from the lecture. To remind ourselves again and to highlight again the, the purpose that has been defined for fasting in the month of Ramadan. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made fasting an obligatory practice. For Muslims. It's the chapter Baghalah, verse 183, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, O believers, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed as it was also an obligation for the ones who came before you. Why? What is the purpose? That you may have taqwa, that you may become pious. So fasting in the month of Ramadan, according to the verse of Quran, it is obligated for the sole purpose of helping Muslims to attain taqwa, to attain piety. The question is, what does taqwa mean? This is also important. If you want to understand the, uh, the purpose of fasting, which is defined as reaching taqwa, what is taqwa here? There are different definitions based on the literal meaning, based on the some other some narrations, for example. But it can be defined overall that taqwa is kind of a state of soul for the one to be constantly aware of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acting accordingly as his servant in his presence. So a muttaqi is someone who is constant, constantly aware that he is standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever he does, Allah watches over him. He does it in his presence. Allah observes our actions. For someone to reach this state, to have this constant awareness and to act upon it, to make sure that 
one doesn't act inappropriately in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the meaning of taqwa. This state of soul, this awareness, this mind, uh, mindfulness, it is in a reciprocal, in a mutual interaction, relationship with two categories of action. So taqwa itself is a state of soul. However, it is manifested in one's practice. So a muttaqi can be identified with their actions. And not only it manifests in the actions, but actions also empowers taqwa. The more one practices, those actions that uh, are related to taqwa, the level of taqwa goes higher. So there is a kind of circular in a relationship between uh, taqwa as a, as a state of soul and between those practices that are representative manifestations of taqwa or piety. There are two categories of actions that, as I mentioned, the, this shows one's piety manifest, one's piety gets manifested in these type of actions. And also they, in turn, they empower one's piety, intensify one's taqwa and piety. First category of actions are the ones that are related to the man-divine relationship, relationship between us and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are talking about worship, about those devotional practices, du'as, supplications, those time that we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we ask for his help, his support, those type of actions that, that is related to uh, our relation as a lost creatures to our Lord, to our Creator. The second type of category are the ones that are related to man-man relationship, to the social interaction, to the, to the in relationship between one human being and another. These two type of actions, again, they are the ones according to which we can identify someone's piety. And also the, there are the ones that help someone to achieve higher levels of piety. The fasting in the month of Ramadan, the way that Quran introduces the way that our hadiths discuss is a unique platform. It's a unique instrument for spiritual perfection. It is designated, designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in our spiritual endeavor. First of all, when we are fasting, the attention is directed from physical needs to spiritual needs. The, so what we have about prohibition of drinking, eating, sexual pleasure, so on and so forth, it is just an attempt to let us focus more on our soul than on our body, because these three acts that I just mentioned, drinking, eating, sexual pleasure, they all serve the our material body. So maybe one of the reasons that during fasting we are instructed not to engage in these acts is just to attract our attention to a much more important matter, and that's the soul to feed the soul instead of the body, 
to help the soul achieve perfection, the soul pleasure, the soul's elevation rather than body again. What happens in the month of Ramadan is that the impact of the spiritual practices on the purification of soul becomes much greater than the, any other time of the year. The abundance and the extent of divine mercy, divine grace provided in this month for us makes it more likely for someone to get included and embraced by divine blessing, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers us in the month of Ramadan with those blessings. So it is very more likely for the one to be forgiven in the month of Ramadan, for example. It's much more likely for the one's dua to be answered in the month of Ramadan. Because, because of the extent of the divine mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to grant upon his servants in this month. However, to benefit from this unique opportunity, we need to focus on two matters. First, we must realize the uniqueness and importance of the month of Ramadan and fasting in the month of Ramadan. Because as human, the more we are convinced of the value of something, the more we find ourselves committed to it and to protecting it and to following it. So first of all, we have to know what is the opportunity. We have to value the opportunity we are given every year in the month of Ramadan. Otherwise, we will regret losing this, these opportunities every single moment in our eternal life later on. And we need also, the second point, we need also to benefit from adequate instructions from someone who knows the path, who knows the secrets, who knows the challenges of a spiritual endeavor, spiritual journey, to guide us on this journey in the month of Ramadan. And the seven of Shabaniya fulfills these two requirements. So the Prophet peace be upon him delivers this lecture in advance before the month of Ramadan to prepare Muslims for what for the benefit that is going to come. To get ready to get ready mentally to know the significance of the moment and get ready in the, in the terms of practices to know what to do when the opportunity came around. And this is also the reason that you see the sermon is being delivered in the month of Shaban, although the content is about the month of Ramadan. So maybe it was more appropriate to call it the sermon of Ramadaniyya, because it's everything about the month of Ramadan, not about the month of Shaban. But the very fact that the Prophet delivered it in the month of Shaban, which is again, a reminder that the Prophet didn't want to wait until Ramadan, so didn't want to waste even a day, just even a, an evening for the people to lose the month of Ramadan before they listen to his lecture. So he delivered it in advance so people can be ready in advance before the Ramadan approaches. And Ramadan, so one enters the month of Ramadan. First, the Prophet, peace be upon him, starts with highlighting the significance of the month of Ramadan. He addresses people saying that Indeed, the month of Allah is approaching. A month filled with blessing, filled with mercy, filled with divine forgiveness. The month that is the best of months before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Its days are the best of the days. 
Walayali Afdalu Layali and its nights are the best of all nights. Wasaatu Afdalu Saat. Each moment, each hour, each second of the month is better than equal time period in the other months. And the Prophet is upon him. I think that he because just was enough for him to say that the whole month is better than the other months. And by implication, it means that the, the days and the nights and the hours are also more valuable. But the fact that the Prophet is upon him states each of them separately shows that he wants to emphasize that not to lose even a day, not to lose even a night, not to lose even an hour, not to lose even a moment in the month of Ramadan, not to waste this opportunity. Then the Prophet peace be upon him exp explains that what makes this occasion so auspicious, so important. This is the month you are invited to the divine spiritual feast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to, let you, uh, to admit you to the circle of the ones who he have grace upon them, who have a special mercy upon them. There are a few points to pay attention in this phrase of the Sermon of Shabaniyah. First of all, the Prophet's emphasis that it is an invitation. This is an invitation, divine invitation given to people. It means that and you are only benefit from this divine feast if you accept the invitation. Just having the invitation doesn't mean that you benefit from it. Just having the invitation to go to a certain program doesn't mean that you are benefiting from that program unless you accept the invitation and you get there to benefit from that program. This is the case also. So the month of Ramadan is the time in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents this invitation to human being, but not everyone is going to take the invitation. This is a kind of invitation that for accepting it, it is not just enough to say I accept it. It's not just enough a matter of verbal acceptance. It's a matter of heart's acceptance, the acceptance of the soul. It is something that, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, explains, it requires the sincere intention and the pure heart, heart for someone to be able to accept this invitation, to get into this divine feast of spirituality. This is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, فَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ بِنِيَّاتٍ صَادِقَةٍ وَقُلُوبٍ طَاهِرَةٍ So if you want to benefit from this month, ask your Lord, ask your sustainer with sincere intention and purified hearts so that he can give you the tawfiq, the blessing, and you wafiqakum yassiyamihi wa talaw tala so you can get the blessing to properly fast and to properly recite for on the month of Ramadan. And then the Prophet highlights, Whoever doesn't get included in this invitation, whoever his presence is rejected, Whoever he rejects this invitation and would be would not be included in the divine mercy and forgiveness provided in the month of Ramadan is just a miserable and wretched person. 
Shaqi. There is no hope in this person. Such a person who gets rejected from the gracious divine invitation, the mouth of Allah. So it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided to let everyone who's, who sincerely wants to work on themselves, wants to purify themselves in the month of Ramadan to accept them. Unless the ones who rejected the invitation by their own actions, the ones who don't take upon the invitation, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, addresses those people and also explains this matter when he said that, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ أَبْوَابَ الْجَنَانِ فِي هَذَا الشَّحْرِ مُفَتَّحَةٌ O people, the doors to the heaven are already open for everyone in the month of Ramadan. فَاسْأَلُوا رَبَّكُمْ أَنْ لَا يُغَلِّقَهَا عَلَيْكُمْ Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then to not close it for you. So it means that default, as, as for default, the door is already open for everyone, for a spiritual elevation, for a spiritual perfection. Unless one acts in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to close the door for them. وَأَبْوَابَ النِّيرَانِ مُغَلَّقَةٌ فَاسْأَلُوا رَبَّكُمْ أَنْ لَا يُفَتِّحَهَا عَلَيْكُمْ And the doors to the hell, the divine fire, are closed in the month of Ramadan. Again, it means that the opportunity, the willingness, the feeling of attraction to divine is much more intensified in the month of Ramadan. This is what we see. We see that many mosques in the month of Ramadan, and I, I have this experience seeing many people that you don't see them through the year, but when Ramadan comes, you see them in the mosque. There is an attraction, a spiritual attraction. That's because, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closed the doors to the hell, opened the doors to the heaven. All those divine blessings are already shower, showering people on the, on the earth. The ones whose heart are still capable of receiving them, they feel more attracted to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month. That's the sign. And the Prophet continues, وَالشَّيَاطِينَ مَغْلُوغَةٌ فَاسْأَلُوا رَبَّكُمْ أَنْ لَا يُسَلِّطَهَا عَلَيْكُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to chain, to put in chain the agents of Satan, the agents of Satan in the month of Ramadan. So ask Allah to not let them take over you again. And this again implies not to act in a way that Allah decides to leave you out of his mercy in the month of Ramadan. Just within, within the parentheses, I have to mention that the, um, the approach that I'm taking in discussing the seven of Sha'ban, yeah, I'm not uh, just reading from this, the sermon from the beginning to the end, but just I'm trying to approach it uh, based on themes and subjects. So you may see some of the, uh, some of the excerpts from Dua that has been moved in my lecture. So again, the Prophet, peace be upon him, emphasizes that it's an invitation and it's up to you to take the invitation by, your, by sincere intention and by pure heart. And this is the month that you will feel the spiritual attraction is, your, is if your heart is ready. The more your heart is ready, the more you feel inclined towards dedicating yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan. The second point in this phrase, Allah, is the expression of Allah, is that the Prophet, peace be upon him, describes this month as a divine feast. What does it mean, a divine feast? Even some may say, what kind of feast is that, that you are prohibited from drinking, from eating, from sexual pressure? Because that's 
what do we when we go to a banquet, a feast, we are welcomed with different type of meals, different important types of refreshments. What kind of feast is then if these are prohibited? So unlike a material feast and banquet which nourishes the body, Ramadan's divine feast is designated to nourish the soul. Again, that's why those actions which somehow empower the body are discouraged in the month of Ramadan during fasting. So one can focus more on one's soul, not get distracted with bodily pleasures. So you see some of the aspects of this divine feast, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala celebrates it, the way that he rewards, he welcomes his guests is by giving them a kind of prizes, kind of rewards that has no precedence in the other months. Even the actions that have no positive spiritual impacts usually in our life are given a spiritual emphasis in the month of Ramadan if one does these actions with sincere intention and the ones who accept divine invitation. The Prophet peace be upon him says, Anfasukum fihi tasbi, even when you breath, your breath is glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's counted as glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are fasting, if you are accepting the invitation. Just simple, merely sleeping, which we see the waste of our time, but we need it because our body needs it so we can work, so we can live our life. So it's a requirement for our body to refresh itself, to get charged in a way. But in the month of Ramadan, even for one to sleep, one is being is going to be rewarded for sleeping. But that's a divine banquet. That's a divine feast. And when you enter the feast, everything you do is rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When now the time that you spend sleeping there counts as you, you worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another characteristic of this feast is that the ones who usually do not meet requirements to be recipients of a special divine grace and honors in the other months. In this month, they have the chance to get adm admitted to that, that honored status. In this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents such a great and magnitude grace grant them upon his creatures that the expectations are minimum just to reach out for divine grace and you get it. وَجُعَلْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ كِرَامَةِ الله. This is the month that you are given admission to the level that you were not being admitted before in the other months, but this, in the month of Ramadan, you are giving you are given admissions to the level that you can be included in a special divine mercy and blessing. Those actions with flaws in the other months that could not reach your could not help your soul much in the month of Ramadan. Those actions will be elevated and will be accepted. What dua kum fihi mustajab? The duas that the other months were not being heard because of the flaws in them, because we were praying, we we're asking for something, but our heart was not sincere. We were not ready. The dua did not meet the uh, did not satisfy the requirements for being 
responded, accepted. In the month of Ramadan, the requirements get minimum. Those dua can be accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows some, such mercy upon his creation that he accepts even those flawed duas. So this is divine feast. As I will explain later, many practices are rewarded multiple. Many practices are rewarded like no other practices in the in other months. These are all characteristics of the Prophet Allah, divine feast that is approaching us. The Prophet peace upon him's lecture, when you look at as I discussed before, addressing two requirements for taqwa two type of practices that strengthen taqwa, intensifies taqwa, and also manifests taqwa. Those type of practices are the individual practices between man and divine, between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those social practices, our responsibilities towards the other people, other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is also a part and an important uh, division, an important section of spirituality, half of spirituality. For our discussion tonight, I'm highlighting those advices that the Prophet peace upon him provides when it comes to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the worship, about the ritual practices, about prayer. And inshallah, next week, I will dedicate the lecture to those social responsibilities that the Prophet, peace be upon him, highlights and emphasizes and indicates in his Seminar of Shaban. The Prophet, peace be upon him, reminded all of us in this month that this is a month that when you go through fasting, when you endure the hunger, when you endure the thirst, when we are suffering from not being allowed to have those regular pleasures that we had in our life on a daily basis, the Prophet peace upon him says that there is a purpose for it. Be mindful of that purpose. Remind yourself of that purpose. This is something that we have to practice. When you, it's the end of the day, one hour before iftar, and you feel weak, you are very hungry, you are very thirsty, and it gets difficult for you. Just remember that there would be a day much more important that you will have to suffer much more severe kind of thirst and type of hunger if you are not ready for it. So be reminded of the day of judgment. The day of judgment which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran, is not like the usual day that we have. It's like 1,000 years of what you call year. It's a long time that human beings are resurrected before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for someone who is not ready, they wait in the desert of Mahshar, they wait to be put on trial. The thirst and the hunger that we have some narrations and hadiths refer to it is unbearable and unimaginable. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, again remind us that the purpose is to get distracted from your bodily needs and pay attention to your spiritual need, to your soul, your eternal life instead of your material life. 
think about what your actions, the impact that your actions could have on your eternal life. If you are weak and you find it difficult to even bear, to even tolerate this very temporary short type of suffering, just not to eat for a few hours, not to drink for a few hours, how you are going to tolerate those suffering, the day of judgment, which cannot be compared to what you endure today. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, continues, This is the month of repentance, the month of Tawbah. And repentance is very important because it is also the, the requirements for benefiting from Ramadan. Because for, for the soul that is already polluted, for a soul that is already deviated, is already darkened, although not completely, but it cannot benefit, it cannot find the opportunity to elevate itself, it cannot fly without wings. Again, the Prophet reminded us that we need we need purified hearts in order to benefit from this month. So repentance, ask for Allah's forgiveness and to let our heart become ready to let our sins to be washed when we enter the month of Ramadan. That's a necessary requirement. And it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says, who tells us in chapter Baqarah verse 222, Allah loves the one who are looking for purity, loves the one who are repenting from their mistakes. And it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again in chapter Zumar verse 53 that he promised us, Tell, O Prophet, to my servants, my servants who made mistakes, who violated some boundaries, who practiced injustice against themselves. Because when, you, when I make, I commit a sin, I'm putting myself in danger, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going against my own interests. I'm damaging my soul. O Prophet, tell them, لا تغنتوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفير الرحيم. Don't lose your hope in the in divine forgiveness. Allah can forgive all of your sins because He is غفور الرحيم. He is the one that forgives the most. He is the one that is most compassionate, most merciful. We have this narration that would would be would addition to the verse of Quran is from Abi Sabbah al Kanani. He says that I ask Imam al Sadiq that what does it mean to do Tawbah? Ya ayyuh al ladina amanu tubu ila Allah Tawbah al Nasuha. Imam says that it's Allah ya tubu la abdu min al dhamb thumma la yaudu ilay. Is for one to decide first to ask forgiveness for the sins he committed, and then decide not to return to it and not to not to repeat that mistake again. That's the tawbah. That's what we need to do. That's what we have to promise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to get ourselves free from the chain of the the, the sins that we are committing. And you must remember that this is a requirement if you want to benefit from this opportunity, unique opportunity. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then remind us, Ayyuhannas, in anfusakum marhunatun ba'amalikum, fakufuha bistaqalikum. Oh, people, you need to know that your soul is already chained. It's already chained down to the earth, to the ground, because of your own actions. And there is only one way to free your soul. If you hope that your soul 
can embark on a spiritual journey in the month of Ramadan and that's to ask for istighfar, ask for forgiveness again. This is what you need to do. So your soul get the opportunity to step in the path of spiritual perfection this month. وَظُهُورُكُمْ ثَقِيلَةٌ مِّنْ أَوْزَارِكُمْ فَخَفِّفُوا عَنْهَا بِطُولِ سُجُودِكُمْ Again, the Prophet emphasizes. And your back is already burdened with the weight of your sins. Make sure that you take some burden from your back. Make sure you reduce some of this burden to light your burden, to lighten your burden by prolonging your prostration before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have in many hadiths, you're encouraged to do sajda, to prolong the sajda after the prayers. In some hadiths, it is highlighted that it is important because this is the same action that uh, Satan refrained to do. It is what distinguishes us humans from Satan who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one who is true servant and obey him. So act of prostration is, in some narration, they said is the most difficult thing for Satan is to see that a believer prostrates before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will say, does say that before him. The Prophet, peace upon him, then uh, encourage us to do some practices, again, to feed our soul more in the month of Ramadan and to be aware of the prizes of the unimaginable prizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for us in the month of Ramadan. It says, Man adda fihi fardan kana lahu thawabu man adda sabayna faridatan fi ma sawahu min shuhur. Whoever does a wajib in the month of Ramadan, he would be rewarded 70 times compare, more compared to the reward he was getting in the other months. Again, it's a divine feast. It's a divine, it's the feast of mercy and feast of grace. Whoever performs voluntary prayers, mustahab prayers, the month of Ramadan, that can save them from the divine punishment, the day of judgment. And whoever increases in reciting salawat on me, the messenger of Allah. In the day of judgment, when people are mostly afraid about the divine scale, mizan, whether the good actions, good deeds would outweigh the bad deeds or not. The Prophet says, if you increase reciting salawat on me, that would ensure that the day of judgment, your good deeds would outweigh your bad deeds. That would help at the day of judgment. وَمَنْ تَلَى فِيهِ آيَةً مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ That's very interesting. That's a bit, just, it just shows the extent of divine grace as mercy in the month of Ramadan. وَمَنْ تَلَى فِيهِ آيَةً مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ كَانَ لَهُ أَجْرُ مَنْ خَتَمَ الْقُرْآنِ فِي غَيْرِهِ مِنَ الشُّهُورِ Whoever recites a single verse in the month of Ramadan, Allah would reward him like someone who, who finished the whole Quran in the other verses. So one single verse would be equal in according to the rewards, the prizes, to the, to the reciting the whole Quran in the other verses. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just needs some excuses to reward, to show his mercy and his compassion to us. And it's not, one was, should be so miserable to live, to not be even able to provide those mere excuses to be included in the divine mercy in the month of Ramadan. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, is the end of the sermon. But as I mentioned, so I'm talking about those matters related to individual relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just at the, at the end of the uh, sermon, Ali alayhi salam stands up. Because he is the one who narrates the, the sermon. I stood up, فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مَا أَفْضَلُ الْأَعْمَالِ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ There is the wisdom of 
الذي يسمعه he knows what to ask what is the best thing I can do in the month of Ramadan among all the practices you mentioned about everything you mentioned what is the most valuable thing to do in the month of Ramadan and the, then the Prophet peace be upon him responds with something that we need to remind ourselves of it every single day in the month of Ramadan فَقَالَ يَا أَبَّ الْحَسَنْ أَفْلَلُ الْأَعْمَالُ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ The best thing one can do in the month of Ramadan is الْوَرَعُ عَنْ مَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ أَزَّ وَجَهِ is to make sure to be mindful not to get away from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month from committing a sin from violating his boundaries it's the best, most important thing because if you do it, you are, you are already expelled from the divine feast. For someone who violates divine boundaries, to someone who suspects divine rules in the month of Ramadan, it means that one did not accept the invitation by practice. So the Prophet says the most important thing first, the most important action that we do is not to act. The most important act is not to act against Allah's will and Allah's commands in the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the blessing to prepare ourselves. We have not much time. It's about eight or nine days at most. In the month of Ramadan is approaching. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the insight and the blessing and provides us with the blessing to prepare ourselves, our family and to inshallah enter the month of Ramadan and we are already embark embarking on this spiritual journey inshallah. Please recite a salawat. <laughs>